how to warm up your voice correctly. Have you ever been going along doing your vocal warm-ups and um, you just feel like you don't have the freedom, uh, you feel kind of locked down in the throat and no matter how hard you try, even all the way to the end of your warm-ups, you just don't feel quite warmed up, kind of like a bad hair day for the voice? Let me explain this. A lot of people think that they should be able to just go and slam the voice or shock the voice uh, into submission and hit that note right away and boom, they're good to go and they can go out and sing whatever they want. But it couldn't be further from the truth. Now the voice is an organic mechanism. Now unlike guitar where you should have that same lick or piano lick or drum lick, you should be able to do that over and over again. The voice is a little temperamental and so it needs to be treated as such. So instead of slamming or shocking the voice and trying to warm it up too quickly, when you start to feel that sensation, you wanna slow it down a little bit and warm it up more slowly. And a good thing to do actually is to take a nice hot shower or use a humidifier or steam of sorts so that you can actually put moisture in the cords because your cords are made of collagen and that collagen needs the moisture for elasticity in the cords to stretch and have an ebb and flow in the cord. So we wanna put resiliency back in the cord but we also wanna do it via stretching the cords correctly when we sing. Now, I wanna do um, a simple triad with you guys and for those of you out there that have a tough time with the lip drill, I don't care if you use your hands right now but I want you to uh, do this this uh, triad with me, ladies, you're gonna go up the octave. I picked the mean average of a baritone and a soprano or you know alto soprano. So follow along as best as you can and just understand the concepts of this even when you're doing your own warm-ups. Check this out. Don't forget your stomach and your abdominal strength, i.e. your diaphragm to help you with your breathing. Now you altos right about here, you're gonna to start to feel a little bit of a pulling sensation. If you do, just stop and then wait till we hit this note, the D, to come back down. Now you would be up at the D5 in the octave of this. So, so right here would be for the guys and girls would be continuing with the guys down the octave. Sopranos, you're going to start to feel it around here. So let me do this for the ladies. You're probably going to want to stop right around there. I'm going to do two more for the guys. Now you guys, somewhere between this note here, which is an F sharp four to a G sharp, a G four to a G sharp four, that's about where you wanna stop for a minute and not go beyond so that you don't shock your voice into warming up the voice too quickly. Let's come back down, ladies, uh, sopranos, you join me up the octave. you can join back in up the octave. Let me do it for you now. Guys down here. So let me explain this not shocking the voice into submission to go too high too quickly. So for you males out there, the guys, you're gonna wanna stop here. 
If you're a tenor and you want to take it up a little higher, and if you feel really comfortable, you can move it all the way to the A4. This is true for the altos. Instead of stopping at the D5, you can go. You sopranos can take it up even higher. Now, don't be Superman, guys. Don't feel like, well, I can push it harder. I can push it faster. I can go. Why? Why shock the voice into that? Take your time. You're going to find out this is going to be really cool in the end. So let's do the next exercise. So I'm going to take it up just a little bit. I'll take it up a half step because what we do as we're starting to warm up, as we start to feel warmed up, we can move it up a note. One note, maybe two, not more than that when we first start out. So I'm gonna move it up. Instead of starting down here, I'm gonna start it up right here. And the scale is gonna be. Okay, so you're gonna do this with me, and it might be a little fast if you're new to this, so you know you can slow it down. I'll do one really slow for you, so. <laughs> Ladies, you're up the octave. Speed it up a little bit. Now, for baritones and altos, right about here on both of these exercises, there's going to be a tendency to default into head voice or falsetto. That's a good thing because we want to be able to have such an easy feeling in the throat, a relaxed feeling in the throat, to warm up everything in the throat, the vocal tract, the resonators, everything that's going on in the throat. We want it to be in a relaxed state. So I'm actually rolling into head voice or falsetto. You can't hear it because the burble's a little deceiving or the lip roll's a little deceiving, but check this out. Head voice. Sorry, I should have taken a bigger breath. Next one, here we go. Sopranos, you're gonna to start to do this now yourself up the octave, as would a tenor. So if you're a tenor or a soprano, right about here is where you're gonna to wanna to make that switch, allowing it to roll into head voice. Don't try to pull chest voice up to wake chest voice up too early. It's too soon to do that. Yes, I could go and really pull my chest voice up, but it's too soon to wake up to chest voice. I don't want to slam the chest voice to shock it into waking up too early because you're going to see that as we do this correctly, how we warm up the voice correctly, it will come even if you're having a bad hair day for voice you're gonna have a good hair day for voice and you're gonna go, oh my gosh, all those times where I got stuck and locked up and lost freedom in the throat, I am able to rehabilitate or recoup that and get it back quickly by doing this correctly. Let's continue. <laughs> Remember that's where we're stuck? That's where we stopped before. Now we're gonna go up a little higher. One more. 
<laughs> I jerked on the way down. And that's okay. By the way, lick your lips. If that happens to you, it's just moisture on the lips. Lick it real quick. And take a good breath. Now, a couple things I want to mention. If you feel really kind of uh, that day, do this whole thing and repeat it. Repeat this whole thing. It's not criminal. Take you seven, eight minutes, whatever. It's a good thing. You're going to relax the voice and you're going to start to hear that ping and clarity. Like if you notice my voice, it kind of got a little brighter since I started uh, out these, these sessions. I haven't warmed up today. So I deliberately did this at a time to show you here I am not warmed up at all how I would warm up or how I'd warm up one of my students. Now, we're going to do the tongue exercise and a lot of people have trouble with this and they say, what's the purpose? And I like to explain the purpose of all these things. So that first one was to relax the face, to relax the voice, to go through your passaggio, you know, the register break, wake up your chest voice a little bit, wake up your head voice, wake up resonators in the face. The tongue exercise is different. We're going to do this now and you either have or haven't seen it. By the way, I have a singing course. The course is called How to Sing Better Than Anyone Else and I cover this incredibly, incredibly in all kinds of different ways in order to be able to help you. So this is just one simple way to warm up your voice correctly. You can find uh, my course right here at KenTamplinVocalAcademy.com where I also have a free singing forum with over 25,000 singers over there all negotiating this stuff. So the tongue exercise is actually pulling the tongue away from the back of the throat. Now I take a lot of crap from people saying, oh Ken, look at your tongue. It's 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 you know really tense or or it drives me nuts. I can't watch it. Well what they don't know is that the abilities that I have to use my tongue for singing um, is that I can actually shape my vocal tract, which is the, the your throat, the back of your throat. And we're gonna talk more about that. So stay with me. I'm gonna do a series of these videos to help you guys understand this stuff. But Anyway, it pulls the tongue away from the back of the throat because in open throat, early bel canto or appoggio, you know, operatic style of singing, we want to create the maximum space for freedom in the throat in order to be able to get through these vowel exchanges. And we're going to talk more about that in another video. But so with the tongue, we're going to go, mmm, mmm, kind of like there's a ball in the back of your throat. And what it's doing is it's pulling the tongue away from the throat. Now, ultimately, as we've talked about, it's the la, ah, and different vowels. If you want to go through my channel, you'll see me do all kinds of different vowels. And I talk about how to get the tongue placement. First, we want it la, ah, ah, to the base of the jaw. When we get really good at it, la, ah, ah, it'll actually be concave to the jaw. And when you get really, really, really good at it, you can have the tongue pull away from the back of the throat, which people call me lizard tongue. They just don't know what the hell they're talking about. Anyway, and so as I pull it away from the back of my tongue, I'm actually able to create and manipulate vowels very subtly in the back of the throat without having large vowel movements in the throat, which is called vocal tract shaping. I'm gonna get into that more later, but so this tongue, as we're pulling it out, you're gonna notice as you're going higher, you won't be able to go as high as the lip drill without feeling, I don't wanna use the word discomfort, but a pulling sensation in the throat because it's pulling the tongue away from the back of the throat, whereas the lip drill is just relaxing the throat. So let me show you what I mean. So guys, you're with me down here. Ladies, you're up the octa octave. It's gonna be like this. Mm -hmm. 
okay? Pull it away from the back of the throat. It's gonna feel like there's a ball and you're gonna pull it away. Now, some people like to just hum. And that's fine too, but it's not pulling the tongue away from the back of the throat so that we can experience what it's supposed to feel like when the throat is open and it really highlights where your passaggio is, where the register break is, and also how it's more difficult to have a chest resonant sound and try to pull that sound up higher because it's harder to sing this way with the tongue pulled away than it is actually with a lip drill, but it serves a purpose and I'll explain that as we go. Here we go. You're gonna to wanna to go into head voice earlier with this. You'll see what I mean. Mm, I'm in head voice. Mm, I wanna to default to head voice earlier because it's harder to do. Now be careful not to bite down on the tongue and create tension in the jaw. Remind yourself you want to be loose and relaxed. Did you notice it's a little more difficult to get up there up top with the tongue pulled away? But that's more of the reality of what it would be like to sing vowel sounds than an exercise like the lip drill where everything's really relaxed and you can't really tell as you're rolling from chest to head. You're not really using that for singing. But everything we do here at Ken Tamplin Vocal Academy is with a practical application for singing. Let me explain this. I see a lot of ridiculous, unnecessary, needless exercises, and all these weird things that people doing that have no application to singing. I'm gonna give you an example of this after I'm done with this exercise in a minute, but I want you to know that you every exercise you do, you should understand why you're doing it, which I explain how thoroughly in my singing course, and you should also know how to manipulate it where if you get stuck in one direction, you do something else to get you unstuck and all the different ways for you yourself because I wanna teach you how to fish. I don't want you coming to me for fish. I want you to know how to do this on your own. Let's come back down. Don't pull chest. Relax the head voice because we're still warming up the voice. We're not shocking the voice. Now, you've heard me say this before, it's not practice makes perfect, it's perfect practice makes perfect. So if you're just doing scales and you're saying to myself, why am I not getting any better? Or I'm doing the scale and I can hit these notes in a scale but I can't put it in a song, Exactly, because it's not just practice that makes perfect, it's perfect practice that makes perfect. So if you understand the why, why you're doing what you're doing, and how to apply that to singing, it's gonna make sense to you. I wanna continue with this exercise, and then I'm gonna to talk to you about a different exercise that gets used a lot, misused a lot. So anyway, I'm gonna move it up now. We started here, I'm gonna move it up a half step with the same second scale we did on the lip drill, ready? to bite down on the tongue, keep the jaw gentle. Now 
right here where we stopped before and I said you're going to feel a little tension in rolling the head voice, I want you to bring your chest voice online a bit. Even if it cracks or feels a little uncomfortable, we're going to start to wake up the chest voice now. For tenors, baritones, altos, and sopranos. But do it at the same spot we did it before where I said you're going to feel this pull. Start to wake up the chest voice a little bit like this. Now the last time I went into head voice. You can hardly tell because I'm really good at it, um, but the last one just now was head voice and the one before it was chest. So I'm gonna stay in chest for a minute. Here we kind of bring chest voice online. But now, I'm going to go back to head voice. I deliberately popped it in there so you could hear me go to head voice. So it would be better if I did this. Okay, and I go in and out of the register break without hearing the break because that starts the fusion process of bringing your chest voice and your head voice together to sound like one note rather than a, a robust, bright chest sound and a hooty fluty head sound. So let's come back down. Okay, right about now, you should start to feel your voice starting to wake up carefully and gently, okay? Now, I promised you to talk to you about exercises that are misused. A lot of people, even in Bel Canto or SLS, will use an NG, like hung, and they'll go, It's not that that's a bad exercise. A lot of people do it, a lot of people swear by it, some people swear at it. When I said that we use everything for a practical application for singing, when we go to sing Loving You with an NG at the end of loving, Loving You, you find that you get bound up in the throat and we want to avoid the NG as much as possible. I'm not saying we won't use it, but we certainly don't want to embed the NG into the throat. So, what I, I'm going to suggest to you is you can do this exercise with the NG and go through this and get a good, nice, bright, resonant sound that almost sounds kind of twang-like as you're going to do it. This exercise is predominantly used for determining vocal FOC or your vocal type so you can help tell uh, really clearly, it's, it's very evident as to where your register break is. Um, and it's good for cleaning off mucus and things like that. If, you're, if, you're, if your voice has got a lot of and you have some dysphonia or lack of connection in the chords where you're losing 
actual sound to come off of the vocal folds. You can use that to close the chords and get them to vibrate or resonate uh, more clearly and with, with good tone. And you can use that for those kinds of repair purposes. But to do this as an exercise and embed NG in the throat, in my personal opinion, is not the best way to go. There are other exercises to learn open throat technique to keep the throat nice and open rather than embedding that sound. So let's move on to an ah vowel. And we're gonna close with this, but I just want you guys to, to experience the freedom of the ah la. Now remember, it's like the doctor wants to see your tonsils in the back of your throat. And I cover this again in my singing course, KenTamplinVocalAcademy.com. I have an incredible 180 gig course. You heard me right. It's 80 hours, I think, somewhere around there of tutorials on going through every minutia of every detail to teach you how to fish rather than coming back to me for fish. So anyway, on and off, Al, we're going to move it up a little higher now. Here we go. La. bright ping. I'm not covering the sound. I'm going to So I want you to get a handheld mirror out or look at a mirror, your phone or something. Be nice and bright with a little mask in the face. Keep nice and bright on the sound. Use your diaphragm to support the sound. La La Now do you remember when we started these notes here for you baritones were kind of like, uh, kind of feel a pulling sensation in the throat. Same thing with you altos up the octave. You probably felt that sensation, but now you don't feel it as much because we're warming up the voice correctly, gently and carefully. La. criminal to take a three to five minute break, drink a little water, come back and start to do that vowel again and go through some of my other vowels that I have on my YouTube channel or get my singing course and I walk you through this stuff in spades because now you're gently starting to warm your voice up correctly and you can even fix a voice that starts out in the morning going, oh no, I have a performance today. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do it because my voice sucks and you're having a bad hair day. We're gonna turn that into a good hair day, all right? Stay tuned for my next video. I'm gonna sing for the people